हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू ए टू जेड डेंटिस्ट्री अ चैनल विच फीचर्स ईजी एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ वेरियस डेंटल टॉपिक्स सो आर टूडेज टॉपिक इज जन जैवल एप्सिस सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर डिले लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग जन जैवल एप्सिस अंडर द फॉलोइंग हेड्स इंट्रोडक्शन डेफिनेशन इटियोलॉजी क्लिनिकल फीचर्स हिस्ट्रोपैथोलॉजिकल फीचर्स डायग्नोसिस एंड द ट्रीटमेंट प्लानिंग मूविंग टूवर्ड्स द एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ जन जैवल एप्सिस so basically the word gingival abscess is derived from two words that is gingival and abscess by gingival we mean this particular abscess or disorder is related to the gingiva or the gingival tissues and it is occurring within the gingiva right it is not in the pedontium it is not in the tooth structure per se rather it is occurring in the gingiva by abscess we mean it is a localized collection of pus so what constitutes the pus so basically it consists of dead and dying neutrophils right our various wbcs apart from neutrophils bacteria and epithelial cells which are derived from the host cells so gingival abscess basically means an abscess or a localized collection of pus which is occurring within the gingival tissue moving on towards the definition of gingival abscess according to caranza a gingival abscess is defined as a localized prolonged infection so as we have discussed previously abscess we mean localized collection of pus therefore gingival abscess is basically a localized kind of a infection which involves pus by word purulent we means it is involve pus right and it involves the marginal gingiva or the interdental papilla now when we talk about gingiva we know that it consists of three parts the marginal gingiva the attached gingiva and the interdental papilla so this gingival abscess is a terminology which is basically given with regards to the marginal gingiva or the interdental papilla and not the attached gingiva right so gingival abscess is basically a localized collection it's a localized collection of pus or a prolonged infection which is involving marginal gingiva or the interdental papilla so in this picture as we can appreciate in the first picture it is involving the interdental papilla and the second picture it is involving a bit of marginal gingiva as well as the interdental papilla talking about the etiology or the cause of gingival abscess so basically it is a type of acute inflammatory gingival enlargement right and it results basically because of a bacterial infection now this bacterial infection is carried deep into the tissues uh, whenever a foreign substance for example a toothbrush bissel or some kind of edible food item like a piece of apple or a lobster shell fragment is forcefully embedded into the gingiva right so via these things what can happen is the bacteria can travel deep into the gingival tissues resulting in formation of a gingival abscess right so basically whenever a foreign material is going inside our tissue our body naturally tries to ward off that infection so it results in accumulation of those wbcs neutrophils and other uh, what we can say uh, products of inflammatory reaction which results in formation of pus over there basically it is this pus which is now referred to as gingival abscess so this particular lesion is largely confined within the gingiva and this should not be confused with pedontal abscess or the lateral abscess right so whenever the inflammation or the abscess is confined mainly to the marginal gingiva or the interdental papilla we we'll label it as gingival abscess whereas when the pedontal tissue is involved we we'll label it as a pedontal abscess moving on towards the clinical features firstly we'll be discussing about the site so according to the definition itself when we talk about gingival abscess now we know that it, it is exclusively limited to the marginal gingiva or the interdental papilla right it might involve the marginal gingiva or it may involve the interdental papilla and attached gingiva is not involved right now if at all attached gingiva is involved we'll label it as a pedontal abscess it it cannot be called as in gingival abscess then right so in this picture we can appreciate that this is abscess right this is the localized collection of pus here and it is related to the interdental papilla right the interdental gingiva is involved here so this kind of abscess is largely confined to the marginal gingiva it will never involve the attached gingiva so our next point in the clinical feature is basically the onset so as we have discussed previously it is a acute uh, kind of infection of the gingival tissue therefore it is a localized painful and rapidly expanding type of lesion now we can uh, here say that it is a acute type of lesion mainly because we have seen the etiology right whenever a foreign body is forcefully embedded into the gingiva such kind of abscess may form right so basically 
the whole this scenario is la largely pointing towards an acute event right so mainly our abscess is a localized uh, form of an inflammatory lesion and it is painful as it is acute therefore always pain will be associated with abscess and it is rapidly expanding we know that our body is continuously trying to ward off this infection therefore there is a large number of wbc wbcs that are been re recruited and there is a kind of a battle going on between those bacteria that is the foreign body and our wbcs right so it is a rapidly expanding kind of a lesion and it has a sudden onset as we have discussed it is acute therefore obviously it would be painful it will occur within a shorter period of time within a shorter period of time it will expand to a larger extent and obviously it will have a sudden onset talking about its appearance so in the early stages it will appear as a red swelling which will have a smooth and shiny surface right so here in this picture can you appreciate this part basically it is a red kind of a swelling right with a smooth surface smooth and shiny surface now within the next 24 to 48 hours that is within next one or two days what will happen is that the lesion will usually become fluctuant now this fluctuance is mainly because the accumulation of pus as we know that the accumulation of pus will take some time those wbcs will be recruited there will be a battle going on but it will require some time for the body to recruit the WBCs to the particular site of infection. Therefore, the period window is somewhere between 24 to 48 hours in which it forms a full-fledged abscess. So basically, it becomes fluctuant, it becomes somewhat pointed and it will have a surface orifice. Here, can you appreciate this is how the surface orifice looks like, right? And from here, there is exudation of the pus. After some time uh, or after the limit has reached, the tissues cannot bear the pressure due to the expansion, continuous expansion. Continuous, there is a war going on between our WBCs and those bacteria. There is accumulation of large amount of pus. So there is a pressure build up inside the tissues and therefore naturally or orifice forms and there might be exudation of pus, right? Now up till now we have seen the changes which will be occurring in the soft tissue or the abscess itself is occurring in the soft tissue. Initially we focused on the soft tissue changes which are occurring but now we should also know something about the hard tissue that is what happens to the teeth. So the teeth which are ad adjacent to the uh, infection right the abscess they are sensitive to percussion. Now this is why see mainly because when we are talking about the abscess we are uh, talking about something which is present either in the marginal gingiva or in the interdental gingiva. So basically due to the formation of pus there is great amount of pressure which is being exerted right due to the accumulation of pus to the surrounding structures. So when we try vertical percussion it will be sensitive to the percussion right. Moving on towards the histological features of the histopath. So basically the gingival abscess consists of a purulent focus. By that I mean it's a collection of those dead and dry neutrophils, epithelial cells, right? Then we have those bacteria, right? And this is occurring within the connective tissue. And it would be then surrounded by diffuse infiltration wherein we can appreciate the neutrophils. We can appreciate all types of our WBCs right and there is edema now whenever we talk about an infection obviously there will be accumulation of a fluid within the connective tissue which results in edema and there will be vascular engorgement now mainly because it's an infection the uh, there is recruitment of a large amount of cell there is edema within the tissue now what happens is that whenever we study the stages of inflammation we very well know that within the first 24 hours there is a massive amount of vascular engorgement which occurs mainly because the difference in the pressure gradient which is occurring due to the infection over there right and this was the changes which are limited to the connective tissue when we talk about the surface epithelium we might see that there is varying degrees of intracellular as well as extracellular edema which we can appreciate right and there is invasion of the whole epithelium by our neutrophils and other leukocytes right and also we might see an ulceration mainly because there is such amount of pressure there is edema right there is pus now what happens is that it may result in the discontinuity of the epithelium and that might sometimes give rise to ulceration so the gingival abscess may become ulcerated now it might happen inherently because of the histopathological changes which are occurring at the level of epithelium and the connective tissue or it might occur because the person may try to uh, bite over that thing especially if we see in the teenagers and all right they have this kind of habits uh, right so it can also result in uh, ulceration of the epithelium basically any kind of trauma to such uh, swelling might result in ulceration of the surface epithelium
moving on towards the most interesting part that is diagnosis now how to know right if a, what kind of abscess uh, is this right if a patient comes to you how can you differentiate between our uh, gingival abscess versus the periodontal abscess now see uh, we can definitely establish a clinical diagnosis there will be a red swelling with a shiny surface as we have discussed previously right also there will be associated pain right now all these factors right the appearance of the lesion and the history which the patient tells you we, we can differentiate between our gingival and periodontal abscess now largely if there is if there has to be a one differentiating point it would be that in case of gingival abscess the abscess is related to the marginal gingiva or the interdental papilla however the periodontal abscess is related to attached gingiva right also for a periodontal abscess to occur the patient should be a known case of periodontitis only then periodontal abscess can occur but in cases of gingival abscess a patient might be completely otherwise free of any disease for that matter any systemic disease or a periodontitis per se right and because of a forceful wedging of any foreign material there might be transient formation of this gingival abscess now the laboratory diagnosis right it consists of all the features which we have discussed in the histopath there will be a purulent focus of infection within the connective tissue it would be surrounded by a dense ring of our leukocytes and neutrophils there might be surface ulceration as well moving on towards the treatment part so our treatment largely involves a single kind of a therapy that is incision and drainage whenever a case of abscess is there obviously we have to go with ind so for incision what we do is we'll first apply a topical anesthesia right now the fluctuant area of the lesion should be incised with a blade now the most fluctuant part of the swelling is our target right we'll be incising that region with the help of a blade and the incision itself will permit the drainage right all the pressure which has been exerted by that pus the pus will come out and instantly the patient will be relieved of the pain right then the area is cleansed with the help of a warm water and it should be covered with a piece of gauze right after the hemorrhage is controlled after the bleeding ceases we'll instruct the patient to rinse in every two hours with a glass full of water should be lukewarm water preferably so this is how an incision is given the most fluctuant part of the swelling is located and with the help of bp bleed we'll be giving an incision targeted towards the most fluctuant part now as soon as the incision is given there will be outflow of all the purulent matter which is accumulated right then we need to clean the whole area right with warm saline or warm water and then we can arrest the hemorrhage and it will be followed by giving a cotton or a gauze pack over it so that we can arrest the hemorrhage right for about seconds to minutes a bleeding might occur now fresh bleeding is indication that the pus has been evacuated well right so this is how it is carried out here you can see a pressure pack uh, is been placed after the abscess has been uh, drained so this is how ind is carried out so that was all about gingival abscess i hope you understood that topic very well so the question what might come is that they might ask you about what exactly is gingival abscess the definition clinical features diagnosis and the treatment plan it might be asked as an saq or they might ask you the difference between gingival versus the periodontal abscess these are two most commonly asked questions so i hope you understood the topic very well this is dr snail signing off uh, i'll be back soon with new video on a new topic till then bye bye take care